Well, good morning. Yesterday was a very interesting day. My sister is visiting, which is absolutely wonderful. She's awesome. When I woke up in the morning and headed into the house, my dad was screaming. He was holding his head, saying, not safe, not safe, not safe. Really loud. It sounded like a bad dream, but it was worse than that. And he's not one for hospitals, vitamins, nothing. And he asked for the hospital. So the ambulance came. They came in, scooped him, checked his vitals, all that stuff. Went to the hospital. He has a stroke, obviously, last year. But uh, currently, there's a circumstance called edema. And that's the swelling of, or extra fluid buildup. Causes swelling. And starts in the feet. And moves up the legs. To the lower abdomen, to the abdomen, to the lungs eventually. And it's too much fluid building up and it swells. So you get very little movement, flexibility. Your flexibility is shot. It's really important to do a lot of movement when you have this condition it helps so as you get older keep that in mind for van lifers because we sit a lot uh keep moving keep mobile keeps that fluid from from not happening it can also create pressure on the heart the blood flow but also on the brain a lot of fluid build up creating all that pressure which makes it hard for the heart to manage he has a weak heart. So now he's in the hospital for the next few days. On one side of the coin, there's a little bit of peace <laughs> because he can be a handful sometimes. On the other side of the coin, let's hope that this uh, gets handled. But he was slipping in and out of consciousness, and that was kind of, that was new. He never had that before. We'll know in the next maybe today or next two days, a little bit about the status of a situation. So that was yesterday. Today's a new day. Time to get it happening. So this is my morning wake up ritual. I do some grounding, feet on the earth, getting those electrons, adjusting the electricity in my body. And I've found that if I do 30 minutes of grounding a day, the energy I've got is so different than if I don't. If I do more than 30 minutes, like I've done an hour before, I have a hard time going to sleep that night. It's too much energy. Less than 30 minutes doesn't seem to do anything for me. So I've experimented with this a little bit, just walking on the earth, sitting on the earth, reading a book, hanging out, doing some editing, whatever it is, drawing a picture, anything. Just contact with the earth with your bare feet. For me, it's an awesome. I highly recommend people experiment with it. It's pretty cool. They've done experiments where they have found or measured on uh, an instant electron uh, update into your body sitting on the earth or touching the earth with your bare skin. Uh, they've measured how the, the energy of the body is working. And then it gets a, just a jolt or well, maybe not a jolt, but an upload of energy from the earth. So it's pretty interesting. Also doing 30 breaths inhale exhale through the nose kind of not forcing it but not being too slack just nasal breathing in and out creates nitric oxide in your system really good doing a round of 30 breaths and then on the last one you exhale and don't inhale 
for as long as you can. You don't force the hold, but you nonetheless keep it out until your body says breathe, then you go for it. And then you hold it in the first breath, as long as you can. Same thing, you don't force it, but you hold it. When your body says let it go, let it go. And then you repeat that two more times. This uh, oxygenation, I, from what I've read, uh, really influences the blood supply first thing in the morning, which improves clarity in your brain, gets everything going, so to speak, and has lots of benefits for calming the mind. For uh, There's a bunch of research done by uh, Wim Hof, who they've studied him quite a bit doing this, this breathing type technique. He'll do it and then go into ice water or run a long distance or do things with cold or do push-ups or crunches, a bunch of things where that breathing technique is like switching on a switch. The other part about it is you want to stimulate your adrenals a bit. So when you do it, you're exhaling fully, you inhale fully, but you're kind of putting some emphasis on it and some, some, it's like the bear is chasing you, whoo shit, and away you go. It's kind of like that. And then when you exhale that 29th breath or 30th breath, you get, when it's all exhaled, you get this space in your head start to occur, this, this state, this shift. You like feel, I wouldn't say lightheaded, but a little bit in that direction is, is the feeling that I've found. And you hold it and become super present. And when the, pre, when the oxygen is cut like that and you have this spike of adrenaline in your system, and you do this three times in a row, like I said, your body releases a bit of cortisol, but it also releases a whole bunch of other positive things throughout the whole body as a result. This small spike of cortisol and a little bit of adrenaline that occurs dissipates quite quickly, but you're left with this very, very calm, alert, I call it calm, assertive state. You're extremely present and very open, creative too. And they, the data I've read and stuff, I can't remember exactly right off the top of my head because it was a while ago that I had been reading it. Um, the benefits are huge for anybody. Now, the Apaches, when they're training their young braves in uh, the old ways, they would have them have a mouthful of water hold a rock right at their midsection and run. And they can't spit out the water. They can't swallow it. So they learned to nasal breathe through in and out of their um, nose. And there's a whole bunch of data about the importance of nasal breathing and the benefits for your entire body when you do this for exercising. That's a whole other topic. But uh, similar to the Wim Hof, it's, uh, it's important. It's important. Also, I was reading, when you put your eyes in the morning light, it's supposed to be really good for your pineal gland. No proof on that that I'm aware of, but um, they're saying it's good for your brain, good for the pineal gland, good for your eyes. There you have it. And listen to the birds. So, how do you change? I mean, what's the process? You just stop doing this and start doing that? From what I've learned, that's kind of it. <laughs> but and what I've also learned is that there is, our personality is really invested in itself. And change is a challenge because there are certain chemicals that are released when we do the things that uh, support us being us. So in a sense, we're kind of addicted chemically to being a certain way. And when you go to change that, alter it or shift it, 
you're inviting new chemicals and messing with the old chemistry. That's why change is difficult, because the old you wants to stay you, because it likes you. But the new you you're trying to become isn't in process yet, isn't completed. So there's no chemical addiction to that new you yet. So it's a challenge to do and do that new activity, quit the chocolate or stop the drinking or do the exercises or whatever it may be. There's a challenge to doing that because it doesn't know what it is yet. There's, 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 it's, it's an unknown. Whereas the old is a known. It's safe. It's predictable. It's what it is. You depend on it. Yada yada. But if it's not serving you, if it's crappy behavior, you just want to shift. Then there's a part of your personality that's going to pay the price, and it doesn't want to pay the price. It wants to stay, because that means you have to become different. You literally are shifting and becoming a different kind of person, and that new you ain't so completed yet, and the old new ain't happy about it. So it'll try to sabotage you. It will. It'll do what it can to sabotage the new you from happening. Guilt, fear, doubt, anxiety, stress, all those things is the old new, the old you trying to stop the new you from happening. Procrastination doesn't want to do it. It's like, no, 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 we don't want to be changing. No, no, we like who we are. We're going to keep it this way. The new you hasn't been come yet. It's like, no, no, this is the idea. This is the goal. This is what we want to try. Let's, we got to get going. We got to go, 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 go. Move, move, move. This is real, real, real. This is the mission. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's crazy sometimes. So one of the tricks is humor. Make it fun. Make it enjoyable so that your old personality enjoys changing, has fun with it that it's more of an adventure and less of a stress. And so that's one approach you can do it because you're going from here to here or from here to here, whichever way you're going, you have to realize that this is the old you, this is the new you that you want to become. You got to look at what is the old new that is in the way of the new you and then assertively chop those attitudes out of the way until you become the new you so imagine this is a and b and you want to go from there to there and you are filled with personality likes and personality dislikes. Okay, and that's you. That's your personality. On the way to here, you're going to get distracted by what you like and don't like. And so your energy might go, whoop, and then it might come, boop, and it might go down to here, it might come up to here. But if you take that line and stretched it out, you'd be somewhere around here. And so this theme happens on every journey. We procrastinate, we change our mind, we, we're unhappy, we like, or get those backwards. <laughs> we have certain tendencies we want and don't want, and then we got anxiety, we got stress, and then we love it, we're excited, and then we're back on track. So we keep spending a lot of energy going up and down instead of just being a little more calmer and going straight to what we want. Now, as these likes and dislikes happen, we actually prune some of them. And so the person you're here is different than the person that's here. Because this person, this adventure, this, say you wanted to climb a mountain and you started here at the bottom, you're gonna have to go through some of these emotions and you're gonna think and you're gonna change. You're going to change who you are as you get to here, and you'll be a different person, ever so different in subtle ways. But say you're trying to lose 50 pounds or 40 pounds or something like that, say, then you have to deal with cravings, emotional uh, food and that kind of things. And by the time you get to here, you've overcome those emotional food issues or at least addressed them. And so this person is different than that person. And that's how 
everything in our life is. We are constantly changing who we are all the time based on our likes and dislikes. But the more neutral we can become with our likes, our likes are good, but they balance the dislikes. And when we look at our dislikes and we go, okay, that's not a great behavior. Let's, let's not do that one anymore. There becomes a gap. And that's what we normally call a depression. And then we try to feel like we used to feel. We try to get those emotions back because that's how our old person was. But the new person doesn't need that emotion. It doesn't fit. It doesn't work. It's already served its purpose and it's no longer needed for the next level. That's just a basic summary, a basic concept of who we are and how we get to be who we are and how we get to be if we want to be somebody different. There's a lot of different ways you can look at the dynamic, but the main thing is where are you today? Where do you want to go? And what's in your way? When you can come to those conclusions, you can be honest and truthful to yourself and whoever else needs to know about it or not know about it. Again, it's your journey. For me, van life has been awesome because it helps minimize those dislikes and likes. Van life also helps it get simplified. It's a house on four wheels. It doesn't have a lot that it can take around with it. So it helps my mind get clear, helps my approach, helps a lot of things. It's a little Zen monastery on wheels <laughs> in a way. Whatever your choice and, and uh, view and perspective and wherever you want to go from whoever you are today, just know that it's a normal thing to go through little ups and downs of depression. It's how we tweak the old and refine it to become the new. That's basically it. So my little journey was I start with those morning exercises and then I move forward. That's how I begin my day to get clarity, recharge the body with energy from the sleep and address my future day. That's all I got. I hope some of this makes sense and I can do more of this later if you want. I mean, it's not much more detailed than this. It's This is my simplified version of it. But uh, van life for me started out as a simple experiment to do for a couple years. I had a really small van and then I went to the bigger van and then now I've downsized to this van because I thought if I can do that and get unload some of this stuff in my mind and in my life, my reality, it's gonna be better. And it has been. I love van life, it's fantastic. Anyhow, that's all I got. I'll talk to you on the next video. Hope you have an awesome, blah, blah, blah. Hope you're having an awesome day. Cheers.